fight against Israel. But the Philistines looked at David and his men and said, No, you go back home. We do not want your help because they feared that David would turn on them in the heat of the battle. Uh -huh. Come on. You see, David was living in the life of an enemy against Israel. And David was out there going to give his help against his own people in a time of war. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And David was not praying at this time. He had not been praying and seeking God's direction. We cannot find a time in his life that he was seeking and got direction for his life, but he was living in comfort of Ziklag with the Philistines outside of Israel. But in the time of war, there were other tribes that were looking on what was going on, the Amalekites. And they said, look, David and his men have gone. This is an opportune time for us to go in and to take what he had. Because this would be a strike against God's people. The Amalekites were the very people when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt that tried to keep them from going over into Canaan. And God already had a, a thing against Amalekites because Saul was told in the day of his uh, crowning as king to go and destroy all the Amalekites and not let any of them live. Not even the children, not even the sheep, not even the cows, but to kill everything. But Saul lifted up himself and took upon himself to leave, leave the king living and leave the spoil living. And God was wrath at Saul. His wrath was angered at Saul. But Saul justified himself that day in what he had done. And because of his justification, God rejected Saul and his kingdom. That's right. But we find that David had left Ziklag to go help the enemy. And in a time when he should have been seeking God's direction, he was out on the battlefield on the wrong side. But in the instance that David went out into the world and did his own thing, what happened? The enemy came in and took from David things that he desired to have in his life. He took his family. He took his fall. He took everything that he had and he burnt the village. People are telling us today, God looks after his people, but his people have to look after the kingdom. And when the people don't look after the kingdom, it opens a door for trouble to come in and start causing havoc in our lives. And I'm telling you today that we've all been in a place where David's been. There have been times that we've grown cold in God. Of where you once was. Mm -hmm. 
But there's a place that God can call you to right now. You see, David hadn't prayed in many days. David hadn't done a lot of things that he should have been doing. But God said, it's all right. If you'll come back and meet me where you left off, oh, I'll be able to receive you. I'll be able to talk to you. But you got to come back and meet me where you walked off. You see, God is no respect or person. Until God cuts you off, you're not cut off. But you always have an avenue you to get back to where God is. Yeah. 
your blocks. Thank you, Lord. What are you saying, Brother Evans? I'm saying today, if you know God, and if you're sitting here and you still know God, and there's some things that you've lost to the enemy, and there's some things that you've been desiring to get back, God's saying, I'm here for you. I'm right here for you. But you've got to make your way to where I'm at. I'm not coming back for you. you got to come to me. I drove you once. Now, if you'll come back, I'll meet you later. I was telling God the other day, I started uh, a couple weeks ago out there working at Southern Plastics and working maintenance. I've got about four or five burns on my hand and my arm where that plastic shot out. None of that machine hit my hand. And all I could do was stick my hand in cold water because. That price it was 347 degrees when it hit me. And um, I couldn't just put, peel it off because it was burning. But I'm going to tell you, 347 degrees feel like that, I don't want to go to hell. Because hell's going to be seven times harder than that. You don't want your family to die and go to hell. You don't want your kids to die and go to hell. You don't want hell in your house. I'm telling you today, God loves you. And He wants you to live for Him. He wants you to do the things that are right. It don't matter what your friends say. It don't matter Because God is your judge. Oh and God is the ultimate yes. final answer to where you're going to go. Oh Brother Hill, I would rather be a misfit on the earth among all the world than to die and go to hell. That's right. I'd rather not have all the good things in life if that's what it's going to take to keep me humble, Sister Haynes, I'd rather live in poverty and make it to heaven than to have all the riches in the world without to go Whatever it's going to take, God, that's what I want. Because I don't want to die and go to hell already. That's right. Because forever never ends. Bob 
Dillon was famous in the late 60s, early 70s. Wrote songs, smoked dope, drank, and still does it. And when they asked him, how did you get so popular Bob Dylan? And I didn't even like him. I wouldn't listen to him. He's ugly and his songs are ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what he said? On national television in front of everybody. He said, I made a deal with a man that he make me popular. He can have my soul. That's exactly what he said. And he said, I became known overnight. Overnight, I became known in the music industry. He's not the only one that sold his soul. That's right. I bet y'all didn't even know Gene Simmons, the leader of KISS, who was raised in the church. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what they've done on stage ain't nothing moral about it. What are you saying, brother? Was David understood that you got to give your heart to God? Jesus told Samuel, he said, you go anoint one of Jesse's sons. But he said, you don't look at his outward appearance. See, they chose, they chose the king on the outward appearance to begin with, Saul. Saul was the head and shoulders taller than every man in Israel. He was a man of stature. He would have been, he's a great warrior. But his heart was right. But David's heart was right. David was another little boy. Out there keeping his father's sheep. The Bible said he was rude. He was redheaded. Out there keeping his father's sheep. But his brothers were men of, they were soldiers in Saul's army. To hear from this scrawny little boy. And God said, that's him. That's a man after my own heart. And as a boy, David went out and killed a giant. He killed a giant of the very people that he's sitting on the horse to go in a battle with. He killed a giant. He called him an uncircumcised Philistine. What do you mean? He said, you're a god. You don't know my God. You worship idols. And I'm going to take you down today. You come to me with a spear and a sword. I came to you with a, in the name of the Lord. And David took him down. And cut his head off with his own sword. Because David had a heart for God. Uh -huh. He said, I, I kept the bear. I, I, I killed a bear when I come after the sheep. Mm -hmm. I killed a lion. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? God will give you the power to overcome every obstacle in your life. If you will give God the opportunity to rule in your life. David understood that. That's why he inquired of the Lord. And he encouraged himself in God. And he said, Shall I pursue? I don't know what you've lost. I don't know where you're at, but God does. Yes. God saying to you today, this Sunday morning, today's the day of salvation. Amen. Today's the day that I will make things right in your life if you allow me. Yes. If you'll come back and meet me at the place that you left me. Yes. And if you never know me, if you'll come. I'll reach out to you. Mm -hmm. You see, God don't want nobody to go to hell. That's right. For the Bible says it's not His desire. But it's His desire that we all come to repentance. That's right. That we all know Him. Yeah. 
folks, the thing about it is, is that God is here today. He's not far away somewhere that you can't reach Him. But He's near. Uh -huh. That's right. Just like the words in your...